I wanted to make this video tonight to bring you along and to take the chance to be able to show you how you can use a scope to capture waveforms and graph out um, any type of noise on a vehicle that you're concerned with. And instead of the old conventional way with a chassis ear set and headphone setup, I use it on a scope and I will show you how I go about doing that along with connecting and setting it up. I'm also at the same time going to take the chance to show you what the issue is with this particular vehicle or what the concern was or why it was brought to me. As far as what we are working with, it is a, I believe, a 2014 BMW X3 with the N20 four-cylinder turbo engine. The customer was told that they needed the engine replaced, that it was bad due to some noise that it makes while, I guess, running or idling. These engines are pretty notorious for having some common failures, mechanical failures. A uh, big one in particular is the timing set or the guides and chain to fail, uh, tensioners and all that, uh, which can make noises. I particularly haven't experienced any with rod knocks, but can't say that it's not possible. And I have had some with upper engine noise as well. Obviously, it is a GDI engine, which injectors are a little bit loud along with fuel pump. So there's many things that can cause engine noises. As far as abnormal noise to cause someone to basically condemn an engine saying that it is faulty. That is what we are here to check out and inspect. And we will be using the scope with the microphones hooked up. And I will show you what we've got going on. As far as how you go about starting to do the testing, you just simply take your uh, microphone clamps, connect them to any point that you are wishing to get close to as far as measuring for noise detection. Now again, this doesn't particularly just solely work for engine noises. It can work on suspension noise and a bunch of other different noises. I can try to put links in the description to other forms of testing like this that I've done. Here in particular, we are going to test areas that I want to see that are creating the loudest noise. And I am concerned with timing, intake lifters, exhaust lifters, and possibly fuel pump uh, on the, um, the little lifter bucket in there. This microphone here is going to be more towards the intake lifter area it's on a valve cover bolt that screws into the cylinder head near the intake camshaft this one here is on a valve cover bolt it screws into the head near the exhaust camshaft this clamp here obviously is on the fuel pump and down there, I've got it on the front timing case cover. That's four channels simultaneously set up to capture noises. And the other good thing about, unlike how the conventional way, where you'd have to be concentrated on one channel, hoping that at that time that the noise occurs, like going over a bump or an idle noise, that you, when the noise happens, are connected hopefully on the correct channel to be able to identify that channel as being the loud channel that you audibly hear in the headphones. The problem with that is basically that you're only on one channel listening to it with your ears and if you miss it and you're on the wrong channel and you can't ever get it to happen, you just won't know what other channel the noise happened on. That's the beauty of having multiple channels at one time being graphed out and recorded to where you can just simply drive or let it idle, let the scope run, and then analyze the channels after you pause the waveform. Next thing is to just simply connect your leads to the scope. And right away, I am doing this on purpose to show you one thing to watch out for. I only have channel A on right now. I haven't set up anything but you see this wild, crazy 
noise basically happening. One thing you must watch out for is to not have your laptop charger connected while these leads are hooked up. They are sensitive enough to pick up the AC from the converter from the laptop charger and I will show you. Unplug it and the noise goes away. Plug it back in and that electrical noise comes back. That's one thing that will throw you for a loop and make you think you have a bad connection. So next, the other thing that I recommend that found that works best is for on your settings. Voltage range. Don't use auto. Use 200 millivolts. And that gives you a good starting point. The next thing is your time. I always use at least five seconds per division and that gives you a good enough amount of time and lets you able to make good analyzations when everything is on there in long term. At this point we turn on the rest of the channels again at 200 and then you can go ahead and kind of separate them so that they're all individually able to be seen. Next, just on piece of paper, label where your leads are as far as your channels. So the way I've got it set up, channel A is on the intake, channel B is on the fuel pump, C is on the timing cover, D is on exhaust. Another thing that I want to advise you and warn you on, again due to the AC on this converter, the sensitivity of the microphones. If I simply just lay that cord, you see that noise starting to come up and get greater once I lay this down. Just simply unplugging the charger off of the laptop will could possibly not get rid of any of that static noise if the box or the cord is on the cart or item that the laptop and scope is also on. So not only unplug it but also remove this off of whatever cart you're on and your noise will go away. Now that you're connected all you simply do Make sure your leads are safely out of the way and you can start your vehicle and listen. Listen for noises at idle if it's an engine thing or if you're hooked up to suspension, go ahead and drive the vehicle. Now again, this one was brought to check for a bad engine. That's what they were told because of the noise it makes. So I'm letting it idle. And there are your channels. Already one is distinctively different, which is the green channel, but we'll let it run so we can see what we find. As far as how it sounds right now, it's at idle. It doesn't sound too terrible from what I've come to know of these N20s, but the warmer it gets, you'll see that it, it'll have a more distinctive identifiable noise so as I'm letting this run and warm up which it's still not gotten to the point where it makes the uh, noticeable noise that they're complaining about I will go ahead and pause this capture and kind of show you what it looks like right now at idle kind of cold still again green is the identifiable one with the least amount of noise green is going to be on the timing and then blue is on intake, red is fuel pump, and the yellow is the exhaust. At this point, as far as maybe levels, I'd say maybe the blue seems to be a little bit of a uh, higher pitched one. And what, what I mean by that is how the 
frequencies that noises are happening and then amplitudes that's the levels For this one amplitude is very low these actually have some amplitude but the blue seems to have more occurrences and then we, you see some activity there in the yellow as well and we will continue let it warm up until the noise of concern occurs and just to still be on the same capture just to zoom in a little more this is what it looks like green pretty good red has some nothing too wild I would say and then you have blue and yellow with some more distinctive levels now I'm going to attempt to try to let the camera pick up the noise it's not fully warmed up yet but I can get it to create the noise if I barely touch the throttle so I'm just slightly increasing RPM by just a few hundred and I want you to try to pick up the noise now work with me because I'm gonna place you in an oddball place but just hopefully listen for the noise change I hope you picked that noise up, but I will show you actually on the scope. Yeah, I don't know if you could tell, but after the slight rev up, it actually kept kind of creating the noise afterwards. So here it is. These amplitude points are when that noise was occurring, when I accelerated, this was the points that that noise happened. That reverberation point, that kept doing it on its own after I let off of idle is this section here against this section here and I'm pointing out on blue and yellow because that's where the noise is again this was when I accelerated and the afterwards was when it did kind of keep it going on its own you see some noise in the timing some in the fuel pump but the bigger amplitude changes happens on the intake and exhaust. And so to sort of explain what we are seeing is the intake, as we saw in the beginning when the noise wasn't occurring, seemed to have multiple points of occurrences when frequency. So there was more consistent time noise and amplitude was a little bit higher in blue. Yellow had some points of it until I accelerated the amount and frequency increased and amplitude also increased as you can tell the green pretty much stayed the same and so did the fuel pump Th that noise that you are hearing is lifter noise the engine is not bad it's being created from lifters faulty lifters or lifters have bled off or whatnot. Again, you can see how the frequency increases, especially here down on the exhaust. It seems the intake lifters are already a little bit noisy, get way noisier when adding RPM, and the exhaust seem to get louder from their original idling levels when you accelerate which tells me the change in noise when I accelerate, when I audibly hear it, to see the change in noise, especially in the exhaust side, increase and also increase higher than what this was, tells me engine noise is from lifters. The timing is quiet or stays the same. Fuel pump, lifter, any of that stays the same. Noise increase when I audibly hear it comes from an increase that we can visually see 
from the lifter area. The timings are good on this. There is no rod knock. Engine is not bad. The noise, if they want to rectify it, will need to be lifter replacement. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I hope you understood it. I hope that it helps you to visually see how you can identify multiple noises at one time and clearly see which one is the culprit. Here we could definitely see the difference when we can audibly hear it. We can see the rise in amplitude and in frequency as far as occurrence with noise in certain areas compared to others that don't. Connecting this way and using the scope will let you identify 100% and not make mistakes and it will help you avoid any wrong calls. And with that, thank you for watching. And I will try to put uh, information in the uh, description or any type of links that I can to try to uh, help as best as I can. As always, thank you for watching and that's all for this one.